interface. The writers turn Geordi's character into an idiot. <laughs> we begin with a visorless Geordi investigating some smoke and talking to Riker. He eventually finds some CGI fire and sticks his hand straight into it to activate the suppression system without experiencing any damage. It turns out he's in a VR game being monitored by Beverly, Riker, and Data. His VR suit is controlling a probe and they're using it as a test for an actual emergency they're heading to. Beverly says Geordi can experience things more deeply than normal because the Oculus 7.0 can use his visor inputs to connect directly to his brain. I like how she helpfully gave us that very detailed explanation of what was going on even though the people in that room would already know what was going on. It was not very organic. Everything appears to be working well, but suddenly Jordy can't control one of his legs. And I thought it was funny how Riker and the music treated it like it was an actual danger when Data just had to say, oh, I'll just turn it up. They arrive at a gas giant where they are planning to use the probe to rescue the Raman, a ship that is trapped in the atmosphere. The sensors can't detect anything. They don't even know if the crew is alive but the probe will be able to transmit data to them because it has the ability to send data through loopholes. <laughs> Picard asks Geordi if he'll be able to handle all the sensory input. They say they were working at 70% earlier and there's a safety cutoff at 98%, so I'm sure nothing will go wrong. An Admiral Holt hails Picard, so he goes to his ready room to answer it, and he's told that five days ago, the ship Hera disappeared, to which Picard says he'll inform Geordi. It turns out that Geordi's mother is the captain of the Hera, and my first thought was that it was weird to suddenly throw in Geordi's mother like this seven seasons into a show, but then I remembered that Geordi briefly mentioned her back in Imaginary Friend. Geordi goes to his room to watch some messages his mother sent him a few weeks ago when Riker comes in to tell him the probe is ready to go down to the Ramon. He tells Geordi if he wants to take a couple days off, that's okay but they just covered how they don't know if the crew of the Ramon is even alive and they need to get down there as soon as possible. Well, Riker said he could interface with the probe. But then Jordi said it's tuned for my sensory inputs and that wouldn't make any sense. There are a lot of things that didn't make sense about this episode. When Jordi takes control of the probe, he picks up gases that he says must have come from a hull breach. And when he initially connects, he's laughing and having a good time, even though, again, these people could be dead from whatever happened to them. They're not treating it with any sort of seriousness. And pretty quickly, he finds a dead crewman under some fallen debris. He activates a phaser blast to get into another area, and he finds the rest of the crew dead. Suddenly, a fire springs up, and he starts screaming. So Beverly disconnects him, and back on the Enterprise, his hands are severely burned. Beverly explains to Picard that the burns were caused by an energy discharge from the suit. She says the interface tolerance levels were set so high that there was some kind of feedback loop, and the sensors transmitting the feeling of heat to Geordi's hands overloaded. It didn't make a lot of sense, but it was better than what I expected, which was that Geordi's sensations were so strong that his own mind caused his hands to burn. And we see Geordi's hands healing in a space box that seems like it couldn't be possibly used for anything else. So people must mess up their hands often on the Enterprise. Picard says he doesn't want to risk Geordi's safety, but Geordi says if they turn down the sensory input, he'll be fine. While they get the probe in position for the next round, Geordi FaceTimes his dad. They talk about the funeral service, but Geordi says they shouldn't give up on his mother yet because there's no evidence that the hero was destroyed. His dad says the search is just a formality, but Geordi says until he sees some hard evidence, he won't give up. We cut to Data sitting in his quarters, staring at a blank screen for about five solid minutes of screen time.
Jordy finally walks in to see what Data is doing while he waits for Riker to move the probe into position, and Data says he is studying poetry. Jordy points out that there's nothing on the screen, and Data counters that the emptiness can also convey a lot of meaning. He gives a long explanation that lasts another five minutes and was completely devoid of poetic significance. That's what you say. <laughs> he also says Jordy probably came by to talk about his mother, to which Jordy says no way. But then, yeah, all right. Data says Jordy is biased in thinking that his mother is still alive and that disappearances like the Hera's rarely turn out well. And Jordy says that if she is dead, he doesn't know what he's going to do. Probably just go another seven seasons without mentioning her. <laughs> Later, Jordy is suited up, and they send the probe back in, and unexpectedly, Jordy sees his mother on the Raman. She says there's no time to explain, but the Hera is on the surface of the planet, and they need to get down to them right away because they are dying. And when Jordy tries to touch her, he goes into neural shock, according to Beverly. Later, they're discussing what happened, and Data says there was no indication of a transmission or presence with Jordy. And Jordy counters, very stupidly, I might add, that because he's connected to the probe, maybe only he can detect it. The writers throw in the 25th bullshit explanation when Data admits that Jordy can detect things that no other sensor in existence can detect when he's connected to the probe. If nothing else can detect that, how would that information even be useful? What's the point of having the probe be able to pick up that info if it can't send it to anybody else? This episode generated so many questions that weren't answered, and the explanations... This episode's... Okay, <laughs> let's just keep going. Also, Data uses the word phenomenon as a plural when it is singular, which is a mistake that they've made before. Dr. Soong. Oh, I'm so smart. <laughs> yeah, right. Betty, when he was building him, he was like, I input a lot of program into this robot. <laughs> Beverly also tries to explain why Jordy saw what he saw, which he takes as proof that he saw what he saw, even though she's making the complete opposite point. She says the human brain tries to interpret things it doesn't understand as things it does understand. And at this point, Riker could have stepped in and said, yeah, don't you remember that episode where I went just f***ing crazy and my brain made up a bunch of shit? Or that other episode where he went f***ing crazy. Picard points out that the Hera was last reported being 300 light years away, and Data says it couldn't withstand the atmospheric pressure down on the planet. Everyone shuts down Jordy's pleas to be reconnected to the probe again, and Picard tells him that Troy is expecting a visit. Troy asks Jordy about his mother, and he says the last time he saw her was seven months ago when she took over the Hera. And he says he told his mother that he didn't have time to go over to see her, and questions whether he could have made time. So did he see her or not? It feels like there were two scenes that were written at different times and they didn't quite fit them together right. This whole scene, I was distracted by Troy's wall decorations, which reminded me of bloody hospital curtains in a zombie movie. <laughs> Troy drops some psychology 101 on Jordy about why he wants to believe, why his mother is still alive, to which he storms out, because he's an engineer and logic is not part of his job. <laughs> Data comes up with a plan for how to pull the Ramon out using a tractor beam and a series of ships in a row that would use their shields to focus the tractor beam. But he doesn't explain why this wasn't even considered before, and instead they were going to use this experimental technology that had never been tested. Well, they wanted to see if the people were still alive first. So just pull the ship up to see if they're alive. Jordy says the plan should work, but then he starts talking about what might have happened to the Hera. He says they were experimenting with the warp drive, which may have caused a subspace funnel that basically worked like a wormhole and transported the ship to that planet. I love how he speculates a brand new technology that doesn't even exist to continue to explain his theory. And when he's asked for evidence, his only claim is, I picked up something weird. <laughs> Picard asks Data if it's possible, and he says it technically is, but it is extremely unlikely. So Picard says they'll go ahead with the tractor beam plan and ignore Geordi's idea. At this point, I half suspected Jordy was just going to commandeer a shuttle, since we've already seen how easy it is to just take one and go. Riker goes to talk to Jordy in engineering about how he would always ask his father about his dead mother, and Riker would just pretend that she was gone and was coming back. And Jordy misses the point completely and continues down the path of making up stories about where his mother is. He points out that Riker had proof of his mother's death, and Jordy's mother has just disappeared and may not be dead. So naturally, Jordy goes to interface with the probe by himself when Data pops in and says he suspected Jordy would do what he was doing and tells him he can't allow him to endanger himself. 
But then Jordy appeals to Data's emotions with a heartfelt speech. So Data says he'll monitor Jordy's life signs. He requests that Jordy consider the possibility that what he sees is not real, and Jordy says okay. And when Jordy tells Data you'll have to lock me up to stop me from doing this, Data says, well, I can't lock you up for something you haven't done yet. So apparently the word precaution also isn't something <laughs> Dr. Soong programmed into him. Jordy connects with the probe and finds his mother again, and she confirms that his bullshit made-up theory about how the Hera got there was correct. So Jordy says he's going to take the wreckage of the Raman to invert the warp funnel matrix or whatever. <laughs> to send the Hera back through the subspace funnel to where it was before. And Data says he is picking up some unusual subspace energy, which also happened the last time Jordy supposedly saw his mother, which Jordy says must be the communication signal being sent by the Hera. Jordy starts to take the Raman down, and when things start to get dicey, he tells Data to crank up the sentry input. And Data decides to kill his friend by turning off all of the safety protocols. Jordy apologizes to his mother for not seeing her the last time he had a chance. And on the bridge, they finally detect that the Raman is descending, giving Worf his only line of dialogue this whole episode. Uh, no, he had, he had a line earlier when he told Picard about, about Holt. Well, still a nice paycheck for him this time. Data says the Raman will end up getting too far for safe levels of input, but Jordy tells him to crank it up anyway. His mother tells him not to do it and touches his back in the process, which I thought wasn't possible, but whatever. Picard, Riker, and Beverly come in and tell Jordy to disengage, but he says no. And I wondered at this point, did they have the tractor beam relay set up? Could they have just started using that? I don't think so, because they would have been using it already if they did, I would think. Jordy's mother puts her hands around his head and starts zapping his brain. So he tells them to reverse the tractor beam. So I guess they did have that all set up already. His mother then reveals that she's actually a Mortal Kombat Elder God. <laughs> and says that they need to go down to the planet or else they'll die. We finally get an explanation of what's going on. That is the standard, well, we don't have anything unique or interesting, so we'll just do the by the numbers fallback thing. Jordy learns that his supposed mother is actually a subspace organism that was picked up by the Raman when it went into low orbit, and when it moved into higher orbit, those beings were trapped on the ship. Pretty sure we've seen that at least five times in this show so far. Jordy explains to Picard that the beings accidentally killed the Raman's crew when they tried to communicate with them telepathically, but the probe interface makes it work for Jordy. The ship starts falling apart, and the being tells Jordy they are safe now, and it flames out. Later, Picard is chastising Jordy for his actions, and actually says he'll put it into his permanent record, which I did not expect, but it's not like that's gonna affect him later or anything. Picard tells Jordy he's sorry he didn't find his mother, but Jordy says the experience made him feel like he finally had a chance to say goodbye. Yeah, did he forget about the holodeck? He could've just used that. <laughs> Instead of putting his own life at risk and risking a court-martial for him and Data. Yeah, but he literally thought it was his mother. Yeah, because she was acting so normal and not like a weird robot alien the way she was talking to him. <laughs> and zapping him and stuff. I mean, we didn't meet his mother before, so maybe that's what she was like. <laughs> We saw her, though, in the video thing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she thought other people might see that video, so she had to pretend to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> but before, he made basically a recreation of Dr. Brahms using all of the information the computer had. He could have done that. Yeah. I mean, but it turned out that that recreation of Dr. Brahms was not accurate. So if he tried to do that with his mother, would that be accurate? Yes, because he would be able to provide enough input to the computer because he knows what his mother is like. But he knew his mother personally. I think he would be able to tell that it's not really her. It would always There would always be that level of disconnect for him, I think. I don't think so. Crank up the bitchiness by 30%. <laughs> Interface. Overall? It was good to get a Geordi-focused episode that wasn't about a failed relationship, unless you count his relationship with his mom. But that doesn't mean this was a great episode. There wasn't enough story to really sustain the full runtime, and the revelation of the aliens at the end undercut what had been built up, which is the exact same thing that the previous episode did. Jordy's little bit at the end, about feeling like he finally had a chance to say goodbye, felt too much like going through the motions of a story arc conclusion, especially since they never did find out what happened to the Hera. Is he actually going to give up on that now? Well, I mean, obviously he is but it doesn't really make sense for him, for what we saw in this episode. And of course, there was a lot of that dumb techno babble to wade through. 
There's not much else to say about this one because there really wasn't much to it. This season has been 0 for 3 for me so far. I gave it a C-. minus. I thought this episode was terrible. I think a C- minus is right next to average. You really thought this was an average episode? It definitely wasn't good, but I think the biggest problem with it for me was that it was on the boring side, kind of. I thought this one was not only boring, but very disappointing. I gave it an F. Okay. Okay, first off, I don't fully understand why they need this whole VR setup for this situation. An experimental rescue method for an actual danger doesn't seem very smart. Really, if they wanted to use a probe, it should have been like those deep sea robots where they have levers and buttons and shit to control it remotely. The whole VR matrix thing was not only typical sci-fi, but also very typical on how it didn't make any sense. Why is it even connected to Geordi's nervous system in that specific way? Why would you design it to potentially physically harm the operator? Yeah, the sensors in the suit. I would think they wouldn't be able to get so hot that they're burning you. And I know they said there was a feedback loop or whatever, but that doesn't mean anything. They're just throwing shit in there. That was this whole episode, just throwing shit in there. Yeah, yeah. For being a Geordi-centric episode, this one was not very good. I am also glad it didn't have anything to do with setting up a romance, but the plot kept pushing forward without considering the points it was making. And then Jordy seeing his mother, but then jumping directly to the conclusion that she was actually there was really dumb and an insult to his character to have him act so irrationally, especially after there is hard evidence, which he claims to stand by no matter what, that his mother isn't actually there. I disagree because he was... I mean, if he saw her there, why would he not... Th what would he think? That he's just imagining it? Have you not been watching this show when aliens show up every week? When random ghosts possess people and stuff? <laughs> That's a better explanation. But th what they were trying to convince him was that it was all in his head, which doesn't make any sense and is just dumb. I agree. Nobody thought of another explanation outside of she is there or she isn't there. And whenever Jordy would spit out some random theory to support his side, Data would always chime in with some random ass, untested, unverified evidence to support him. Every time, even though nobody asked him to do that. Because Jordy was technically correct. What he was saying was technically possible. That's my next point. So if somebody told Data, hey Data, you can't prove that we're not perfect clone aliens impersonating Starfleet officers who are secretly trying to overthrow the Federation by infiltrating the flagship and the only way to stop us is by breaking all of our bones. That would mean <laughs> that Data would say, hmm, I guess you're right, and then would break all of their bones and drop them in the brig and start performing tests, right? <laughs> if you can't prove it's not true, then it could be true is such a dumb thing for this episode. All I can say is I'll be disappointed if we don't get that episode later this season. <laughs> yeah, and Data is a robot. It makes sense for him to approach things in that way. Then it begs the question, why do they have to ask him those questions? Why wouldn't he be thinking of those things all the time by himself? Well, he probably was. So he's just waiting to kill everybody? <laughs> just in case they're not really who they are? I meant the questions relating to what Jordy was saying here. <laughs> And if he's clearly not fit for duty at various points, why does nobody say, you need to take a break, you're temporarily relieved from duty until you get your shit together? I mean, Picard even told Worf he had permission to leave the ship entirely and go investigate wild claims about his dad a couple seasons ago. The constant band-aids to the main plot just to help it limp along to the end was such weak writing, and it was really annoying. But in Geordi's defense, I thought his point of the Hera just being classified as missing, could mean anything, was very valid. How many times has the Enterprise gone off course or been out of communication? Does everyone just assume they're dead every time? Because that happens at least 10 times per season. That's true. I agree with Jordy that everyone was jumping the gun. The whole idiotic plot device of the sensory input levels was very frustrating. Turn them up. We'll just turn them down. What are you doing? Turn them up. <laughs> just back and forth. It was dumb. This whole episode was weak. It just kept pushing things forward, demanding that we accept them. Okay, I agree with pretty much all of your points. I think for me, it just felt like a typical TNG episode at this point, and maybe I was a little bit too lenient on it for that reason. I am going to lower my grade to a D plus.